we're going to continue learning about web design and HTML by looking at generic containers. Generic containers are special HTML elements that have no official meaning. They are totally neutral. So far you have learned about HTML elements, each with its own semantic meaning. What I mean by that is that an IMG element is used to put images on a page. So the name of the element describes what it does. We've got a couple really special elements, however, that can be used in a very generic way, and they're extremely important. They allow us to group things together, to add style and structure to our web pages. And the two different generic elements that you're going to be learning about are span and div. So a span is a generic container which deals with inline content. And what I mean by inline content is phrasing content. Content that only consumes the amount of space that it needs, like runs of text. So I've got an example here where, oops, I did it again, has been wrapped in what's called a span element. And this span element has allowed us to style this particular inline run of text. So this is exactly the type of thing that generic containers are good for, for wrapping other elements and then styling them. So this is what's called span, and it's the generic inline container. We have another generic container, which is called div. It serves the same function as span, but it's meant for block level content. And by block level content, I mean content that owns the line, content that we intend to have dimension, like um, a width and height. So I have an example here of where I've taken a div, a generic block level container, and I've wrapped it around two different elements a heading and an image. So by putting this div, by wrapping it around other elements, then I can use the div to do things like center the content or to apply style to every element within the div. So this is the generic container for block level elements. I want you to look really closely at the Mozilla Developer Network for these two elements. It's extremely important and you'll see them used all over the place. After that, you're going to do our thimble challenge. In this mini project, you are going to be hands-on working with spans and divs so that you'll be able to see what they're used for and how they're different. I'm going to take a minute to demonstrate for you how these generic containers can be used in practice. Let's start with span, the inline container. So what I've got here is I've got, oops, I did it again. I played with your heart, a little paragraph. I've got a heading that says Britney Spears, and then I've got a picture of Britney Spears. Let's say I wanted to style just some of the paragraph. Well, by using a span, I can do that. A span is a great generic tag that can be used to apply style, amongst other things. Let's say I want to style the oops part of the paragraph. I can wrap oops in a span element and then I could style it however I wanted. So let's say I wanted to give it like a highlight effect, giving it a background color of yellow. Let's say I wanted to make it bold. There you go. So this is an example of how you can use span the inline generic container to wrap around anything you want and let's say to style it. So since there isn't a, an element out there that says, hey, uh, wrap another set of elements and style it, we need something generic, something neutral that can be used for a lot of different purposes and span is one of those things. What about div? It may not be inherently obvious what to do with the div, but a div is a great generic element that can be used to wrap around other content, other elements. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a div around my heading and my image. And now I'm going to show you how you can use that div to affect how to style or position this set, this group of containing elements. So I'm going to go in and using my style attribute, I'm going to, let's say, define the width to 500 pixels. And let's say, uh, let's make it smaller. Let's make it 300 pixels. That shrinks everything. Let's say I want to center all of the containing text. There I can do that as well. Let's say I want to float everything. 
to the right. Then I can do that. So this is a perfect example of how you would use a div generic container in order to affect some sort of change on a group of other elements. So div is commonly used for style, positioning. Um, you saw how I floated, how I centered things. Those are all common uses for the div generic container.